Hello and uh, welcome to a very simple tutorial on how to create a TCP echo server. What I have in front of me is a sample um, C++ program. It doesn't do anything, but it's important to note that the at all C++ programs have a start with a main function. And the main function is the first thing that gets run when you call your server or run your executable. The main function takes in an integer, which is the argument count, and a character vector, which is the argument vector, which, which is where the arguments themselves are stored. We are gonna pass the port to the server and to the uh, command line. So what we do is we declare a new variable called port, and we uh, convert use this function, which is included in the standard library, to convert this string into an integer. We take the uh, second element of the arc vector because uh, the first element of the arc vector is always the name of the executable. Now, what will happen if um, I call my executable with without supplying a port? Um, I will get something called a segmentation fault, and that is what happens when I reference memory that is out that is not um, assigned to my program. So to fix that, I've put in a very simple check that looks at the argument count and checks if it's less than two. And if so, it will print out a short message telling me how to run my server and then exit the program. Here, I have outlined what we need to do in order to be able to um, finish our mini project. First we, have to bend, first, we have to create the socket. Now I've created a socket using the socket function uh, included in sys slash socket dot h. Um, I'm telling my socket that it, the address family is going to be afinet, uh, which is the same as pfinet. And and um, sh you know if if you're unsure about the kind of socket you should be using, you probably do need to be using afinet, which is just like the you know internet. It's a normal socket just connecting to the internet. Um, I'm t I've told it it's going to be a TCP socket by uh, passing this soc underscore stream, um, and uh, for the protocol, I've passed zero, which means just kind of figure it out using this. You know, given this, you know, it's probably in, knows it's supposed to be using TC, uh, IP proto TCP. If I wanted to be more um, verbose about it, I could go, you know, um, IP proto uh, TCP, but again, you can pass zero and it will it'll just know. Now, in order to bind, I have to be able to tell the bind function which port to bind on. And to be able to do that, I've created this um, struct suck adder in um, address, which is going to hold my information. So now it's um, tempting to think that I've done everything correctly, be but because some computers essentially store their uh, bytes in incorrect order, I have to be careful to um, call a function called a host to network short or hate H toms or I don't know how you'd say that. Uh, this essentially is a, uh, it does nothing if your computer is using little endian or big endian, sorry. And if it's using uh, little endian, it'll flip the bytes on this, uh, on this number. And be very careful to remember to do this because it can take you a while to figure out why your um, server is not listening. You know, if you're not receiving any connections, your server might be listening on the incorrect um, port number. So, okay, so now having access to that information, we can call bind on the socket and bind it to the um, information or to the address, essentially. Uh, but to be able to do that, we have to cast it to a struct sock adder pointer and pass the address as by reference. What you should be careful of is that um, bind will return a negative value if the bind is unsuccessful. And this can happen if you're trying to bind on a port that's already taken or you have some um, issue with your uh, address. So be very careful to always check if your bind value is negative. And if so, you will uh, call this function called p error, which will um, print this message and, oops, and also like a small small snippet of inf information which will help you locate where the um, where the program uh, went wrong. So now we'll simply listen uh, by calling listen. And just as before, we will be very careful to check if our listen value is um, negative, um, in which case we will exit with the error message that we couldn't listen. 
So the next thing we do is we accept the new uh, connection. And to be able to do that, I've created a new uh, struct sock address in uh, to hold information about our incoming uh, connection. I've also created this uh, sock length t, which is just a unsigned integer to hold the length of our address. So now what I've done is I have called accept on the socket and I have, uh, as before, casted the uh, remote address, the sock adder in, into a struct sock adder pointer. And I've also passed in a pointer to the remote address length. And this will be uh, modified by the accept function to fill out the information of the client. So one thing to note about the accept function is that it will wait until there is something to accept. Um, so if you call it, it will stop the program until there is a new connection. So what I've done is I've put a little like waiting for new connection message, which will print out uh, before the client connect. To get access to the IP address of the client, I call inet to a on the remote address dot sin at ADDR to uh, change it into change the binary format into a uh, character pointer and I just store that in a string. To get access to the remote port, um, I call NTOHS and this is the inverse of the uh, HTONS, um, essentially taking the network um, order bytes and switching it to whatever the host order is. Let's just print out the um, that, that a new client has connected and go on to uh, receive some something from the client. To be able to receive from the client, we have to declare a buffer, which is where his message is gonna be stored. And I have declared a new character buffer with a length of 1024. Now, all there is to do is to receive from the client. Now, one thing you should always have in mind is that you should always uh, null terminate your buffer. Meaning that you clear out the buffer every time you are about to receive. This is very important because if you do not, you might have very strange um, results. Now, um, to receive, I call the receive function on the client socket because we're now obviously receiving from the client and we're storing it into the buffer. What we're doing also is we're only receiving Un up until the last byte of the buffer. Now this is important to do because if I, let's say, send you 1024 um, characters, which are not zero, and you call a, st a st string length function, for, for example, on the buffer, what will happen is that you will, um, the string length function will just continue counting uh, bytes until it sees a null byte. Uh, and that can result in unexpected behavior as well. So be careful about that always null, be very careful to null terminate your buffer. Something I also forgot to do before is to check if the client socket is actually not negative. If it's negative, it means that there have, there's been an error and we have to exit. The bytes received uh, number or the amount of bytes we've received from the server or the client is a very important number to keep track of because if it's negative, there's been an error. If it's uh, zero, it means that the client is disconnecting and if it's positive, well, it just means that you've received something from the client. So let's go ahead and code that in now. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna check if the bytes received are less than zero, which means there has been an error. We're gonna print that error and we're gonna exit out. If the bytes received are zero, it means that the client has disconnected and we are gonna break out of our while loop and end the program. So what we're gonna do in the end of the program, if the client, client leaves, we are gonna sh call shutdown on the client socket with the shut underscore rdwr, meaning that we will neither be receiving or uh, sending on the socket. And this will shut the socket down and tell the client that we are also breaking down the connection. Now, if we're still here in the while loop, it means that we've received something from the client. Now, um, a good idea is to print that out. So, in order to take our server.cpp, which is a human readable um, C++ file, which has our code, and turn it into something that the computer can understand, we are gonna compile the uh, program, meaning that we're gonna essentially do exactly that. We're gonna have this program, G++, use a C++11 compiler to take this uh, source code 
and compile it and output a executable called server. Uh, if I do this command and it compiles without errors, I can do ls and look and see there's now a server executable next to my server.cpp. Now running this um, executable, I will see the error message we coded in because I didn't in supply the port number and I can go ahead and uh, do 5000. Now, I get this error. Could not bind, cannot assign requested address. The reason for this is that I forgot to memset my address. So there were some bytes or something in the um, in this um, address structure that weren't set to zero and that was messing with my code. So always remember kids, uh, memset your addresses. And uh, just for, you know, safety sake, I am going to do this also for the remote address. So now compiling the server will not result in any, any errors and also we can run the server and it will tell us that it's waiting for a new connection. If we go to a new window and we type nc localhost and our port number, we can see that we have a new connection and we have accepted a new client on the server side and from this random port which is assigned to us by the OS uh, and we can type hello world. Now hopefully we'll see the hello world client. Yes, but you can also see that there is a new line character after hello world. So a, an easy way to fix that is to go ahead into the client, into the server and uh, do a simple check on the last byte of the received message. If that is equal to a no line character, just assign that to be zero. Now, if we go ahead and um, go to the client uh, server again, compile that, run it again, and uh, connect to it again and say hello, we'll see that the message is printing out normally. Now having re uh, received a message from the client successfully, it's time to send a response to the server. We have declared our string response uh, and now it's time to take this string and send it to the client. The way we do that is we call the send function. So we send the message, we send the response to the client by calling send um, and on the client socket and on the response.c string, which just re re returns the um, C string, the character buffer contained in response. And also we tell it to send response.length uh, number of bytes. This is very important if you um, are doing, if you do um, size of string instead, it will give you the incorrect, um, it will give you the incorrect number because size of string is actually the size of the string object. It's not your string length. It's not like you have to be very careful not to do that. I've seen a few people do that and it's not, I mean, it doesn't work. And then obviously like we can't send negative bytes. If we send negative bytes, then you know, there's an issue and we p print our errors and then we just return from the function. So now if we go ahead and we, um, oops, if we run, if we compile a server and we run it and we um, connect on it again, we can say hello world. We'll see that the um, server is responding quite nicely. It will echo our information towards it. Uh, we can also kill our, our client. And then now it, um, it'll tell us that the client has disconnected and is now shutting down the socket. So in this tutorial, we've gone over how to create a socket. Um, we've gone over how to bind your socket. We've gone over how to listen to your socket. Um, accept a new client, print out a few um, you know, bits of information about the socket and create a, you know, a very reasonable um, echo server. Hopefully this tutorial will cushion your landing into the crazy world of sockets. Um, and I hope that it's useful and that you enjoyed watching me flounder around a bit, creating a server. Thank you very much for watching and see you later.